Um, <clears throat> Marcus, how's the preparation going for the uh, Panthers here? Uh, short week. Familiar yeah. Familiar opponent. No doubt, no doubt. It does help that we played, um, you know, 10 days ago or whatever it was. Um, it helps that it is a short week. Um, you know, it's been great. I, I think our guys are locked in, and we're excited about the challenge on Thursday. And uh, how much can you take from that last game? Uh, you all ran it pretty well through from 253. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you probably got to make adjustments, but are there things you all can adapt and carry forward uh, to go along with the adjustments? Yeah, no doubt. Obviously, they're going to have adjustments. Um, we're going to have to be able to be ready for those adjustments. Um, but it always comes down to us communicating and executing, and I think we'll be fine. Where, when you kind of are moving in the pocket, it seems like you have some basketball to you, like point guard, with a shot, or feints, you know. Where did that start? Like, how did that happen? Not sure, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> um, uh, I grew up playing soccer. I played a little basketball. Um, but... You know, I really kind of credit some of the awareness to the game of soccer. I feel like when you play that game, it's always constantly moving. So you always kind of have to be spatially aware of what's going on. And um, I do think that's what kind of carried over into my game. Do you know, is it something that you're noticeably, like you're consciously doing? Or is it at this point just you'll watch it back, you know, the next day or that night and be like, wait, I did what? <laughs> I, I'm just trying to understand. No, no, I, yeah, sometimes I really can't explain it. Um, you know, and I, you look back on it, you know, there's sometimes I wish I would have done this or done that or, you know, hey, that was kind of cool. I didn't really think I did that, you know. Um, but it's more instinctual than it is something that I'm really thinking about out there. And I always feel that I play my best when I'm like that. Is there one this season, like you said, that you look back and like, oh, no, I, I had no idea I did that. Not, that looked pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe the on fourth and one against the Rams um, where I fell down and kind of got back up fast. Um, I even surprised myself a little bit um, being able to do that. Marcus, are there pros and cons to playing a team twice in 10 days? Yeah, I would say obviously the pros are you're familiar with the opponent. Um, it is tough coming off a short week, um, you know, physically. Um, but it is nice that it is a division game. It is closer to home, um, you know, and the travel isn't too far. So, you know, when it comes down to it, there are pros and cons. Um, we'll meet those challenges head on and we'll be prepared for Thursday. When it comes to uh, the last three weeks, had a different starting left guard for, you know, in, when you include this Thursday's game. How have you seen this offensive lineup in front of you communicating consistent, consistently, even in that fluctuation? Well, it's, it's a very close-knit group, and I think when you look across the board, they're all very comfortable with one another, and that belief kind of transcends onto the field. So, um, you know, they're very comfortable, they're very confident in each other, and um, it makes me feel good knowing that, you know, that's how they feel, and um, it doesn't matter who's rotating in a guard, those guys are going to be just fine. Even in, kind of in that same line of thinking, it's like, you know, when it comes to this run game, regardless of who's in at left guard, who's running the ball, each and every down, I mean, how have you guys been able to kind of transcend that consistency over the course of the first 10 weeks of the season, you think? I really believe it, it started in the off season. Um, you know, s like simple fundamental stuff, run tracks with our backs, um, you know, play sat, play uh, hat with our, with our offensive line. You know, those guys consistently do that on a day-to-day -day basis. And those are things that they fundamentally work on day in and day out, even during this part of the year. Um, so those little things, I think, doesn't matter who it is at the guard position, doesn't matter who it is in the backfield. Um, those guys have done it a thousand times and they feel very confident in, in those things. They can just go out there and play. Dave Ragone was also talking about how there's like this intent, like that these guys know the style of play that they that these coaches want them to play with on Sundays or Thursdays. Is that <laughs> something that you see as well? Like that the intent's there? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And I, I really believe, like I said, it, it started in the off season. It was something that was laid out. It was explained to us. It was an identity, sort of say, that we want it to be. Um, and those guys live it every single day. And when you have a coaching staff that truly prepares you in that manner, guys go out there, they feel that confidence, and they can just go out there and play. In terms of, I guess, now balancing the run with the pass, what adjustments does this team need to make in order to maybe be more productive in, in that regard too? Well, I think it just comes down to, you know, one, getting more opportunities and making, making the most of those things. Um, those opportunities will come when we convert third downs. Um, if we're better on third down, you know, the volume of pass plays will, will increase. And, you know, when those things happen, guys are getting the football, you know, more plays will happen and more yards and those types of things. So 
the better we are on third down, uh, the more opportunities we'll get to throw the football. And you know these guys can do it, and we'll just go out there and make plays. Well, what do you think? Uh, maybe the downfield shots haven't necessarily been connecting. Because I mean, throughout your career, you've been around forty percent on 20, 20 yards or further, and this year has been twenty. So I'm saying, is there something different this year? Is there something for you, or just average at more? No, I really, I think it comes down to me. I just got to give those guys a chance, right? Um, you know, guys are finding ways to get open, um, you know, and sometimes it's not necessarily the perfect throw. Um, I think coming back in this season, I've, I've tried to kind of flush that perfectionism, you know, perfectionist in me. Um, that's probably my last hurdle is, you know, I think some of those, those deep shots, I've always been the kind of guy that wants that guy to just catch it on the run. Um, but with the guys that we have, the players that we have, sometimes it's, it's giving those guys just a chance to go up and get it. Um, and I'm working on those things. Those are things that we go out there and practice. Um, so hopefully that will transcend into the field. Something that Arthur was talking about with this Carolina defense is that they're really fast and good at closing in space. How do you? How did you see that from this defense ten days ago when y'all played them? Yeah, I, I really think when like you look at some of the things that we did offensively, whether it was you know getting the ball out to the sideline with some of the bubbles and things like that. Um, you know, in some of those plays, those guys closed down it quick. And, you know, what you thought was going to be maybe a five, ten yard gain turned out to be maybe two or three. Um, so whether it's Shaq, you know, whether it's, you know, Brian Burns and those guys kind of running down on the football, you know, they're very athletic and, you know, they do cover sideline to sideline. Um, so you got to tip your hat off to them for that. The weather could be a factor Thursday if you all looked at the forecast, if you all started preparing for that. Could that play into your favor? Um, we'll have to see. You know, um, you know, I think we're all pretty comfortable with the weather. Um, I've played in a lot of rainy games in my career up in Oregon. So, um, you know, it'll be fun. It's kind of fun football weather. Um, when it comes down to it, I think guys will be prepared and we'll be just fine. What's the worst rain game you played in up there? Cool. Um, there was a game, I think it was 2013, we played Cal at home. And on the Pacific side, they call it a typhoon. And we had a, oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, that was a lot of rain. Um, but, you know, it was one of those things that, you found ways to get completions. Um, I thought we ran the ball well, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, the rain was wild. Like sideways? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my parents left. I think my mom was there, if I remember correctly, and she left at halftime. She's like, I'm good. I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, love you, bye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just one more. Um, Pitts, uh, um, you know, I was looking at the numbers, and, and y'all are hitting on about 50% of the targets. How can y'all get that up? And then OZ, conversely, you know, it's like 22 or 23 or something like that. Uh, can you put more on his plate? Um, well, first and foremost, uh, I can do a better job of giving Kyle um, more opportunities with the ball. I think sometimes I've been a little too safe, a little too conservative where I'm putting the football. Um, so giving him a chance to go get it, um, I think that'll help some of his target numbers. Uh, as for OZ, uh, the more volume that guy gets, the more plays he can do for us. Um, you know, we're finding every way that we can to get him the rock because um, I do really think he's a, a great player for us and he's made a lot of big plays for us throughout the year.